So I've enjoyed some of the chatter, the back and forth with Chris Weidman and John Jones. And, and make sure you understand this, okay? Chris Weidman moved up to 205 pounds. Now, he's a former world champion. He, without question, is the biggest name at 205 pounds that isn't John Jones, for sure. So for him to move up to look to get a fresh coat of paint, try to make a comeback and get back to a title, and for him to declare that to the world and to anybody that will listen, oh, and by the way, he's willing to step in there with the undefeated top-ranked Dominic Reyes. Hey, Weidman's within his lanes. Weidman's doing everything right. You should also note Chris Weidman's record is wildly deceptive. Wildly. If you go and st- you're a new fan, Chris Weidman's getting ready to fight. Well, let me go look this guy up. And you go look at his record. You will be misled to the highest of levels. I mean, let me just go back to his fight with Jacare. Hard fight. Former world champion in Chris against a guy who many people should have said should have been given an opportunity. Many thought he would have won it in Jacare at numerous different points in his career. Weidman's dominating him. Weidman's pitching a shutout. They're about, to, they're about to close this thing up. All Weidman's got to beat at this point of the fight is the clock. As soon as that bell goes off, he gets his hand raised. No, nobody disputes it. Boom, he gets, he gets clipped and he gets knocked out. But if you go and look at some of his fights, Gegard Mousasi comes to mind. I mean, this was one of the weirder nights and the unified rules had just changed. And Well, is this going to apply to New York? And if it does apply to New York, how does this work? There was just all these weird things that happened in this fight. But if you just go look at the records, you're going to see that Chris lost a fight. What I'm offering for you that his record is wildly deceptive and to act as though Chris Weidman is not a top contender any day of the week is ignorant. It's just, it, that, that's not a fair statement. It's just not. When you then look at the business side of things that he is without question the second biggest name in the entire division, a division of, by the way, he has never even fought in He's only raised his hand, signed a contract, and said, I will fight. Yeah, Chris Weidman's got a way to go on this. Oh, and by the way, when he openly comes out and tells people, I already conquered this division, and because of of X, Y, and Z, I'm getting a fresh coat, getting a brand new record of zero and zero, so I'm undefeated. I'm going to go to 205, and I'm going to go after this guy. A lot of people can get behind that. When you couple that with the fact that he's not just talk, He's willing to step in there with Dominic Reyes, who's 10 times up to bat and 10 times hit the ball out of the park. You have to respect what he's doing. I bring this, I will make a point on this, I assure you guys, but understand that. I think most people would be like me and go, yeah, I'd love to see Chris Weidman fight John Jones for a world championship. But then you're going to get the pricks out there too. They're going, well, yeah, I don't know about Weidman. You know, he lost his fight down at 185 and you know his record in the last five was... That is a misleading record. So so don't bring his record up. Just don't. Secondly, I believe that common belief is that we are to a semifinal. Walker versus Corey Anderson. Reyes versus Chris Weidman. I privately believe that whoever, if either Reyes wins or Walker wins, that will be your new number one contender. If they both win, then it will have to come down to who looked more impressive and there's going to have to be a whole discussion. Now, even if that is common belief and that looks as though the way the chips are going to fall, it still puts Corey Anderson in a fantastic spot to play spoiler, which is something we have seen throughout the history of this sport. It's a great opportunity for Corey Anderson, but it's also a great opportunity for Chris Weidman. He's in the same spot. He's in the exact same spot. I saw the way John Jones responded to Chris saying he would like to fight him. John can run his career how he wants. My days of trying to help John Jones are long gone, but my days of critiquing John Jones are well amongst us. If he could handle anything at any situation worse. Now, if John's goal is to just be world champion and be recognized as a great fighter, I'll keep my mouth shut. I swear to goodness I would because he's fulfilled his goal. Who am I to add if a guy that's already where he wants to be? If he wants to continue playing to buildings that are not sold out, which is what he's been doing lately, he can keep doing things the way he wants. But if he would like to have his cake and eat it too, be the champion of the world, be a really great fighter, 
be a main eventer. Oh, and by the way, have people tune in and watch. He's got to play his cards differently. Nobody is going to tune in to see a story that they already know the ending to. Roy Jones Jr. was the most dominant boxer of the 90s. Roy Jones Jr. never once had that big, that big fight. He just didn't. He was too good. He was just too good. He got to a point where there was no imagination or creativity that could be possessed by the audience to believe that the script could go anything other than the way the script had gone in every other fight before for the entire decade. That is not compelling. There are some athletes who have transcended that. In boxing, there has been two. Mike Tyson could fight and draw without an opponent. It could be Peter McNeely. It could be Lennox Lewis. It did not matter if Mike's walking out People are watching. Oscar De La Hoya was the same way. And in large part, I feel that that torch extends to Floyd Mayweather. I do feel that Floyd has a history since his fight with Sean Bay Mitchell in 2005 where Floyd Money Mayweather really has come out. I think that it extends to him. Amongst other sports, I would have to go all the way back to Michael Jordan where people knew how this was going to go, but he was a level of greatness that they were willing to part with their time and money and visit around the water coolers, if you will, about what he was going to do, how many rebounds, how many passes, and how many points he was going to score. But that's a very, very rare feat for any athlete. So when you have somebody with an incredible story like Chris Weidman, who did take out Anderson Silva, not only once but twice, grabbed a world championship, changed weight classes. Oh, by the way, he's from New York, you're from New York. When you have one of these stories and he automatically, just by immersion, becomes the biggest name next to you, it would seem as though you'd want to get on the docket with him. Oh, and by the way, if you think you can get the jump on him, then you really want to get on the docket with him. You don't try to talk yourself out of a fight that you believe you can win. You try to talk yourself into a fight. You believe you can win. Unless, of course, you are completely driven by the fact of what people say as opposed to how many people show up to say it. 